Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. If you haven't had the opportunity to watch our previous Econometrics 101 lessons, we'll link to them in the description as we strongly recommend that you watch this series in chronological order to get the most out of it. This week we're hopping into lesson 2.3 and we'll be covering things such as distributions with two random variables, joint and marginal distributions, conditional expectations, and the law of iterated expectation. With that said, let's get into it. Alright everyone, welcome back to the Econometrics 101 series. This week we're covering lesson 2.3 which focuses on probability distributions with two random variables. Let's begin by defining something called a joint probability distribution. This is the probability that two random variables, let's call them uppercase x and y, take on specific values, let's say lowercase x and y. This is denoted as PR or probability of uppercase x, which is our variable, equals lowercase x, which is our possible outcome. And of course, the same goes for our other variable y. Uppercase y, the variable, equals lowercase y, which is a specific outcome. Sounds confusing, right? Well then let's clear things up with an example. That should help. So consider the following example, which actually ties into the previous examples we've been using in the Econometrics 101 series. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, here's a reminder to go back and check them out and then come back to this one when you're all caught up. Links in the description. So anyways, the example is as follows. Consider an example where you have two random variables denoted with uppercase X and uppercase Y. We want to keep the first example super easy to introduce the new concept, so let's make these variables binary random variables. That is, they can only take on one of two values. The first variable X represents the weather. Specifically, X will take on a value of zero if it snows, or one if it doesn't snow. There is no other option, it either snows, or it doesn't, x equals zero, or it equals one. The other variable, y, represents the length of your commute to school. If you have a commute over 20 minutes, we will call it a long commute, and the variable y will equal zero. If your commute is 20 minutes or less, we will call it a short commute, and the variable y will be equal to one. That's it. There are only two choices, a long commute or a short commute. So in this example, there are four possible outcomes for your commute. It snows and you have a long commute, it snows and you have a short commute, it doesn't snow and you have a long commute, and finally, and arguably the most desired outcome, it doesn't snow and you have a short commute. So now our table is populated with some probabilities, but what do they even mean? Well, in the first outcome, x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. This represents a long commute with snow. Over a large sample of commutes, this is expected to happen 0.15 or as a percentage, 15% of the time. Alternatively, we could have had the second outcome, x is equal to zero and y is equal to one. This represents a short commute with snow. Over a large sample of commutes, this is also expected to happen 0.15 or as a percentage, 15% of the time. We could have also had the third outcome where x is equal to one and y is equal to zero. This represents a long commute with no snow. Over a large sample of commutes, this is expected to happen 0.05, or as a percentage, 5% of the time. And then finally, we could have had the fourth option, x is equal to one and y is equal to one. This represents a short commute with no snow. And over a large sample of commutes, this is expected to happen 0.65, or as a percentage, 65% of the time. These four outcomes are mutually exclusive and make up the sample space for all possible outcomes, and therefore, all of the probabilities sum to one. Now let's briefly look at a concept known as the marginal probability distribution. Suppose you want to know the probability of there being snow. So, x is equal to zero, regardless of whether you have a short or a long commute. To calculate this, you need to add up all of the probabilities for outcomes where x equals zero. For this basic binary variable example, that's easy. It's simply 0 0.15 plus 0 0.15, which sums to 0 0.3. This means that the marginal probability that it will snow is 30%. Well, what if we want to find the marginal probability that we have a short commute? Well, when that occurs, y equals one. So we need to add up all of the outcomes where this occurs. Again, in this simple example, there are only two possible outcomes. So we'll add 0.15 and 0.65, which totals to 0.8. This means that the marginal probability that we have a short commute is 80%. Seems easy enough, right? Okay, let's explore something a little bit more complicated known as conditional probability. 
Conditional probability is the probability of random variables, so uppercase Y, taking on the value of lowercase y conditional on, or if, variable X takes on a specific value that is lowercase x. Wow, sounds even more confusing than joint probability. And to the person thinking that, you're right. In a second, we'll look at it in our example to help it make sense. But first, let's look at the formula. The conditional probability uppercase Y equaling the value of lowercase Y given that X equals lowercase X is equal to their joint distribution divided by the marginal distribution of X equaling lowercase X. This may seem tough to wrap your head around, so let's hop into that example. So carrying on with the same variables as before, suppose we want to know the probability of a long commute if we know it's snowing. So we have a long commute when y is equal to zero. But here we are trying to determine the probability that we have a long commute conditional on it snowing. A snowy commute is represented by x equals zero. So what we are being asked is, what is the probability that y equals zero conditional on or if x equals zero? In this scenario, we don't care if there's a short commute. So let's use our newfound equation to solve, which yields the joint probability that x is zero and y is zero, divided by the marginal probability that x is equal to zero. Well, we can see that the joint probability right here is 0.15. This is the probability of a long and snowy commute. Both x and y are zero in this outcome. So 0.15 over the marginal probability that it's snowy, which is x equals zero. Well, the marginal probability of x equals zero is simply 0.3, which is the sum of all outcomes where x takes on a value of zero. So we are left with an equation that says 0.15 over 0.3, which equals 0.5 or 50%. In simple words, this means that there is a 50% chance that we have a long commute if we know it's snowing. But that was an example with two binary random variables. That's way too easy for an elite econometrician such as yourself. Let's go over an example where one of our variables can take on one of six different values. This example is also one which builds upon the examples used in previous lessons, so this shouldn't be the first time you're seeing it. If it is, you should go back and watch those previous lessons. So in this example, we have two random variables. The first is A, which denotes the age of a computer that is randomly assigned to you, assuming that there are 50-50 odds of being assigned an old computer versus a new computer. The variable takes on a value of zero if the computer is old and one if the computer is new. C represents the number of times your computer will crash. It will take on a value of zero for no crashes, one for one crash, two for two crashes, and so on and so forth up to five crashes. After five crashes, we assume that you completely give up on the endeavor and retire the computer to a pile of scrap electronics. Therefore, this table shows us the joint distributions of crashes and the age of the computers. As you can see, the new computers have a higher probability of zero crashes and lower probabilities of crashing than the older computers, and that's exactly what you would expect. Since the table shows all possible outcomes, just as before, our joint probabilities will sum to one. I've included a row with the totals so that it's easy for you to verify this. So taking this table of joint distributions for our two variables, let's create a table which shows the probability that a computer will crash conditional on its age. The formula for calculating the conditional distribution remains the same. Remember, it's the joint distribution over the marginal distribution. Recall that the marginal distribution for both A equals zero and A equals one is 0.5, since there's a 50% chance that you will be assigned an old computer and a 50% chance you will be assigned a new computer. So the values in the top of the table are the joint distributions, which we must divide by the marginal distribution, which is 0.5. And that will result in the values in the bottom table. Pause the video for a second if you need to, to make sure that you know exactly how the values in the bottom table are calculated. Once you're confident that you understand it, feel free to continue. If you still can't understand, feel free to drop a comment and I can explain it even further in detail for you. Next, let's look at conditional expectation. This is the formula. It is essentially the expected value for uppercase Y calculated using the conditional distribution of uppercase Y given uppercase X is a given value, lowercase x. As we know from earlier lessons, expected value is also the mean, so this is also referred to as the conditional mean. Now let's apply it to our example to make it easier to understand. We are trying to estimate the expected number of times a computer will crash given its age. Applying our formula, you can see that it's as simple as taking the weighted average of the conditional expectations that we calculated earlier in the video. I've included the math on screen so it's easy to follow along. The algebra yields two results. 
Firstly, the expected number of computer crashes given the computer is old, which is A equals zero, is 0 0.67. On the other hand, the expected number of computer crashes given the computer is new, which is noted as A equals one, is only 0 0.29. Now it's important to note that these values are average crashes, not percentages, which is why they don't sum to one. Let's move on to the final topic of discussion, the law of iterated expectations. Here's the formula and it shows that the expectation of Y is the weighted average of the conditional expectation of Y given X weighted by the probability distribution of X. So let's sub in the values from our example. Well, the expected number of computer crashes, no matter what type of computer you get, is calculated to be 0.67 times the probability that you have an old computer, which is 0.5, plus the expected number of crashes with a new computer, which we calculated to be 0.29, times the probability that you have a new computer, which is 0.5. This means that assuming you have no idea which computer you're going to get, old or new, you can expect 0.48 crashes. The law of iterated expectation is a relatively complicated concept, so if you'd like an even deeper explanation with even more examples, let us know in the comments. In lesson 2.4, we'll be covering some new concepts such as covariance, correlation, as well as the mean and variance of sums of random variables. If you aren't familiar with these terms yet, don't worry, you will be by the end of the next video. As we say each lesson, we are very excited to be starting this Econometrics 101 series on the channel and hope that you are too. If you liked the video, found it helpful, and are excited to see more, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and comment in the comment section below. This concludes lesson 2.3. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.